October 18th meeting to order. Call. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Vacula. Here. Mr. Murray. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Mrs. Keeper. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we'll move on to the approval of the meeting agenda, and we will have a change. I desire to uh, delete at this time from the agenda under other business, the drug testing policy. I would like to delete from the agenda tonight and continue discussion before we move on approving that policy. So I just need a motion and a, a second to approve the meeting agenda with the change for the regular board meeting on October 18th, 2021. So move. Support. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Vaculate? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Keeper? Yes. Motion carries. This time we need a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting held on September 20th of 2021. So moved. Support. Questions? Discussion? All right. Roll call. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Vaculate? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Kiefer? Yes. Motion carries. At this time, is there any board correspondence? Mr. Small? I received a letter of resignation for Sue Hannafin, who was going to be retiring at the end of the year. So that is dated for June 30th, 2022. This time, Mr. Small, would you like to continue recognizing our guests and visitors? Sure. We have a number of guests with us. Thank you for being here. If you please quickly just introduce yourself. you. At this time, we have a few presentations to the board, and we are going to start with Ms. Keller. Bear with me. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, I'm Lisa Keller. I'm a parent of two um, elementary students. I'm a newer member of the community. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak here tonight. I promise you I'm not trying to make your already very difficult decisions any harder. I just wanted to present some information that I think is important and relative to the issue of masking in the, in the schools. As a member of the community, it's my responsibility to speak up for the kids. And as members of the board, it's your responsibility to choose how to protect our children. I don't want to say a lot about the CDC's recommendation to have all students, staff, visitors, and educators masked. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the statistics about how many fewer COVID cases there are with masking are pretty widely available. A recent report from the Journal of American Medical Association shows that mask schools average about 37% less positive COVID cases compared to their unmasked counterparts. What I did want to talk a little more about is the future of the kids in this generation. Um, some statistics that you might not already know. According to the National Institutes of Health, about half of the kids ages 6 to 16 who contract COVID suffer long-term health effects, what's often referred to as long COVID. 42.6% uh, of those kids had a neg negative impact on their health for more than four months after their infection. In the United United Kingdom, more than 11,000 kids have been sick for over a year, more than 12 months. Those kids are missing school, standardized tests, sports, and frankly, their lives. I know that masks can't stop long COVID, but masks can lower the rate of infection of COVID and potentially save a lot of kids from suffering. Both the CDC and the National Education Association 
strongly recommend masking in schools along with layering as many other mitigation efforts as possible. I know some of those strategies aren't practical in rural Fulton County. Things like daily testing and having a strict three foot distance between students. But there are efforts that could affect the community spread of COVID and other contagious diseases for that matter. Um, CDC recommends assess assessing and improving ventilation in the school with use of fans and filtration, keeping students as far as, <clears throat> far, as far away from one another in the classroom as reasonably possible. But the number one mitigation recommendation is masking and modeling positive attitudes toward it. If a group of students is on the bus for a field trip, for example, and they're all required to wear a mask and an educator declines to wear a mask, it's kind of setting a negative example for what we're trying to make happen here. Um, in July of this year, the National Education Association President Becky Pringle, um, in an interview, she says schools should be consistently and rigorously employing all the CDC recommended mitigation strategies. In the guidelines set forth for Fulton County from the Ohio Department of Health, there's a way to keep disruptions to a minimum in the classrooms. We can act instead of react. We can have very few students quarantine when they feel well, have sports and extracurricular activities go on as planned. If we can just achieve the three major guidelines outlined by ODH, I think that we could please a lot of people while still staying as, staying as safe as possible. More mitigation efforts mean less illness in the students. In a perfect world, none of our kids would come home with crusty sleeves from wiping their noses. But we're never going to eradicate that. But other infections like RSV and croup can also be mitigated with the use of masks. We teach our kids to be strong and to be brave, to study hard and follow the facts. And I think we, as strong Vikings of our community, should follow that advice, too. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Keller. Okay, at this time, Mr. Schmidt. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, uh, months ago, I asked the high school principal, then the superintendent, and eventually the board to be permitted to drive my son to Great Lakes Biomedical when his name was chosen for a random drug test. I was uh, allowed a one-time accommodation and afterwards I appeared before the board to ask that this be made permanent. I was told no. I have, agree I have argued my case and watched as the board and administration took this opportunity, uh, in my opinion, to ignore my privacy concerns and rewrite the policy into a much larger and more intrusive version. I don't think adequate attempts have been made to notify the public about these changes, and I feel that denying a parent like me my right to drive my son to an appointment for this test is a calculated insult. The board has no trust in me as a parent and no trust in these students either. The board and the members of the school administration should trust my integrity at least as much as they trust the integrity of each other. This policy has been built on a foundation of suspicion and this policy, I'm sorry, this policy has been board, built on a foundation, foundation of suspicion. I request the board get input from more parents before voting on the policy change in regards to expanding the drug testing policy. That is all. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. At this time, Mr. Carroll, would you like to follow up with Treasurer's report, please? Yes, thank you, Mrs. Kiefer. <clears throat> The uh, stack of documents that I have provided for you, um, you'll first see um, an update out of the office. Um, just a couple quick things. The funding for Ohio schools is, is changing, as I have mentioned before. Um, there were hopes that we would see these changes uh, really come to life on our October foundation payments, and that has been pushed back to December. So we won't see those changes in the actual evergreen changes per se until then. So um, obviously we have a forecast that is due in November, so that creates a little bit of an issue, but um, I'll do the best I can on that forecast and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, we also talked about an income tax levy. Um, I reached out to our attorney to draft that resolution. Um, I don't have a good example to go off of uh, since last time we reduced 
ability, so he is going to be drafting one. I was hoping to have it here tonight, but I think it's still in process of being drafted. Uh, the documents in front of you. First, you'll see the cash reconciliation that is showing that our books are balanced. And you will see a financial summary showing what we've appropriated and the uh, what we've actually spent out of each object and fund, along with what we have encumbered so far. You'll see the cash summary report. This is the uh, money that we have, literally cash, the money itself in each fund, and what we have budgeted and encumbered. And then you will see a, a disbursement summary. That is our check summary. Those are the checks that we issued during the month of September. And the last two graphs, that is the uh, money that we have received and the money that we have spent according to the forecast for the year. So according to the graph, we are in line with where we, where we were last year. Uh, we are 25% of the way through and right on track. And on the back, you will see this broken down into payroll and benefits. And again, we have uh, spent 24% of the budget so far, which is right in line. And for benefits, we are at 23%. So everything is looking good at this time of the year. And you'll see a couple items on here. We have a few donations. And then the increases and appropriation modifications, those are carryovers from grants from last year and we just um, those are typically this time of year that we find out how much we carry over so we just need to reappropriate those funds. Great. Any questions for Mr. Carroll? All right. Then we'll move right along to our financial part of the agenda. We will need a motion to approve the September 2021 financial reports that we just reviewed with Mr. Carroll. We need a motion to accept the following donations, a $100 anonymous donation to the Student Assistant Fund, 15,000 donation from Evergreen Athletic Boosters to the Athletic Department for Uniforms, a $60 donation from Snowy Summers to the Elementary Principal Fund. We need to approve the following appropriation modifications and to amend the resources accordingly. We need to increase Title I by $20,636.66, increase the Title IIA as $1,850.25, an increase to Title IV for $5.88, an increase to ECSEARP of $4,225.86, an increase to IDEAB ARP for $57,077.95, as well as an increase to the NBHP employee wellness of $2,640. We also need to approve the following state and or federal grants for the 21-22 school year for the NBHP employee wellness grant for $2,640. We need to approve an auxiliary service agreement with the Educational Service Center of Lake Erie West for the 21-22 school year in the amount of $77,630.40 for services of auxiliary service personnel for the benefit of Holy Trinity Schools and to amend resources and modify appropriations accordingly. At this time, I just need a motion to approve the preceding financial motions, reports, and other financial items. So moved. Support. Questions or discussion? All right, roll call. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Baculet? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? <coughs> yes. Mrs. Keeper? Yes. Motion carries. This time we'll move on to personnel. We need a motion to approve the following athletic volunteers for the 21 22 school year pending the completion of all people activity permit requirements. Shane Bergman, volunteer esports coach. Cal um, Callan Schuster, volunteer esports coach. Jared Walker, volunteer head indoor track coach. Payne Pelagic, volunteer indoor track coach. John Mingan, the volunteer indoor track coach. And Chad, Rick, I'm sorry, Richardson, volunteer assistant wrestling coach. To offer the following non-teaching one-year limited contracts effective at the start of 21-22 school year for Bethany Bowser, paraprofessional. We also need to accept the resignation of Sue Hannafin, Evergreen, uh, Evergreen teacher, Mrs. Hannafin's resignation will become effective on June 30th of 2022. Mrs. Hannafin's service to our students and school will be missed. And we need to offer the following supplemental contract for the 21-22 pending the completion of any and all certifications and our licensures to Cindy Pinkelman as senior class advisor. 
This time I just need the motion to approve the above listed personal positions. So moved. Support. Questions or discussion? All right, roll call. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Vaculate? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Keeper? Yes. Motion carries. At this time, we'll move on to other business. And this is where item A, we will be omitting the drug testing policy tonight from the agenda. And we'll move on to item B. We need a motion to approve the proposed new policies and existing policy revisions to current Evergreen Local School Board policy. The following policy additions and revisions are recommended for approval that you can see listed there. So move. Support. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Vaculet? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Keeper? Yes. Motion carries. At this time, we need a motion to approve the placement of an Evergreen Community Library kiosk on the Evergreen Local Schools campus. The locker kiosk will serve as a pickup location for reserved materials as well as a drop box for library items. The library will cover the cost of the installation as well as the upkeep. Let's move. Support. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Vaculet? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Keeper? Yes. All right. And the location will be on the north west corner of the football field. They will tap the power on the white pole that's existing there. They will pour a cement pad and install the kiosk. It's like four by two. Okay. Awesome. All right. We'll move on to the indoor track and field participation. Need a motion to allow Evergreen High School students, athletes to participate in the 21-22 indoor track and field season using the Evergreen High School name. Athletes will be under the supervision of adult volunteers that have valid people activity permits and all participation will cease before the beginning of the outdoor track and field season. If approved, the Evergreen Local School District will assume no cost or liability for indoor track participants and coaches slash volunteers. So moved. Support. Questions or discussion? Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Vaculet? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Keeper? Yes. Motion carries. This time we need a motion to approve an overnight trip for the Evergreen Girls basketball team to participate in the Wayne Roller Holiday Classic Showcase to be held at Mansfield Christian School, Mansfield, Ohio. The basketball team will be competing against teams from across the state. Trip departure will be on December 30th, and the team plans to return on December 31st. Coaches Brittany Simbolin, Shane Chamberlain, and Ethan Van Lukey will be trip, trip supervisors. Please note that the estimated cost of the trip is $1,500 and will be paid using funds raised by the girls' basketball team as part of their fundraising efforts. It's moved. Support. Questions or discussion? All right. Roll call. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Vaculet? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Keeper? Yes. Motion. Hello. Would you like to continue with discussion? Yeah. A few items here that I wanted to put in front of the board. One of them being uh, compensation for district substitutes. We continue to struggle to secure substitutes, teachers in, in all of the buildings. Uh, we're currently paying $100 for a teacher sub rate per day, which is the same as all Fulton County schools. I look to the districts that border us to the east, uh, Sylvania and Springfield, to see where they were at in hopes of maybe luring someone you know, a little further west this way. Sylvania pays $115 a day and Springfield 105 So I wanted to put it out for discussion to see if the board is open to increasing our sub amount to make Evergreen more attractive destination for substitutes. And if so, then do we need to look at the rates for bus driver subs and paraprofessionals and cafeteria and custodial staff? So thinking if we looked at a potential maybe 125, we may be able to draw subs in and not have such a challenging time filling positions. Eric, just so I guess we have a little bit better understanding too, how, I mean, how often does it happen that we don't have sub coverage for a teacher for a day? This year, this year, it's yeah. probably been daily in every building. If we're covering internally with teachers giving up part of their time to cover. And so we're not, and that's at 100 right. a day. 
I don't know if that will fix it, but it, uh, I, I believe a step in the right direction. I know well, we don't administrators have, any... have been in the classrooms covering as well. Right. Well, we don't have anybody taking it at 100 today, so I guess logically, right? We'll increase. Okay. I'm in favor of, of increasing it. Yeah. Our administrators have their own jobs to do, quite honestly, and our teachers, if they have a period off, they should have a period off to grade tests or anything else. And, and honestly, looking at $25 versus having sub coverage for a day or not. I mean, that's penny wise and pound foolish to me. I mean, so, you yeah, I mean, know, we, we need the coverage, you know, I, I'm in favor of it as well. When we talked, what did we say? There was like 40 in a week? Is that what we figured, something like that? This year there has been more than we have historically, so it seems like about each building average is about three a day. Thoughts on why it's more this year than any other years? Uh, there are some individuals with health issues that have been out extended periods, and just that and people getting sick naturally. I don't. I don't know. Nothing specific for any one building, but there are factors that we see that are uh, understandable of why people are out and need to be out. Okay. Um. Brian, do you want to write up a motion so we can vote on that tonight? And then just pass it over to me after discussion. Is that okay? We can do that, or I didn't know if you wanted us to look at, you know, maybe a equivalent percent for some of those other positions, and I would, my thought would be to submit it in November. If you're open to, you know, do we need to look at, you know, bus driver compensation? And Are we having the, the same problems there as well? Yes. If we're going to look at one, we probably yeah. ought to look at all of them. Okay. So I just didn't know if the board was open. I wanted to get it, and if it is, we'll do some some legwork on our end yeah. to be ready to present a, a motion in. Are we having problems at, for aides and secretaries and kitchen staff? Everything, or is it just more overall everything? Um, okay. Some positions are more challenging than others. Secretaries, we've been able uh, we've we've struggled in all areas. Okay. All right then. Let's have something written up for November and. Yeah, can you look at uh, all throughout two coastal districts as well? Yep. Comparison. Absolutely. Everything. Do you know offhand what we pay bus drivers right now or the other positions? Um, for the any OPC position is 1850. Uh, no. Different by position. Okay. For, for I believe there's one route that's a two hour route, but the rest are four. Okay. Uh, update on the construction project. The project continues to be on schedule or slightly ahead of schedule. The steel for the roof has arrived and been installed. Uh, the roofers are here. We got delayed a little bit last week with the rain, but the roof should be going on, and in the next week or two they will have it weather tight on the north and south ends of the project. There are a few change uh, orders and additional components of the project that will add to the final cost above the brick and mortar contract. We will need to purchase furniture for the AD's office and training room along with some sound and video equipment for the film room and potentially some additional weight room equipment. We're getting totals on all of that. So ultimately, the board would need to approve appropriations, uh, would need to approve appropriating those funds to cover those internal items. So more uh, information to come. Is there a stage to where we're going to gain some of this parking lot back over here? That would, you know, ideally the north end here should be done in January, the end of January. So we will gain the majority of the parking back then. Okay. And that's when the bus route will come back this way or the no? bus route will not come back until okay. the south side is done because okay, they'll so be working the behind spring. the school. Correct. Okay. And that portion of the project is scheduled to be done by the end of April. So it's going to be not much time that we have it back before the end of the school year. We're still looking at the end of January for the north end. Yes. But before you switch off of the, the uh, infrastructure, there was a leak in the elementary school, I think, a meeting or two ago. Has that been resolved? 
Um, the, the roofers have come out. Jane, has it leaked since? Yeah, I, I believe they got that corrected. It was where the roof met the wall next to the cafetorium. What kind of warranty do we have on that? We just replaced it. That's why they came out. Is it a year or two I think years? It was where the flashing five years. Met. Any idea how long it is, though? For the roof material, I believe it was a 15 year warranty. With the year install, they came out and looked at it right away. Any other questions on facilities? Was there any damage in the, to the ceiling or anything? It was coming the right tiles? through the brick wall. Were the tiles damaged or anything? Okay. Because if they are, the roofing company should pay for replacement of those as well. You know what I mean? Any damage yep. to the inside of the school, the roofing company should pay for that as well. I agree. I'll follow up with Mr. Miller and see if there was any. Uh, shifting to the, the basketball banner has been put back up in the high school gym. The banner was originally taken down after members of other regional final teams inquired why they didn't, why they didn't have a banner hung up. Uh, upon checking the banner for banner qualifications in the coach's handbook, past regional finalists were not recognized. We have since ordered banners to recognize those teams as well, and we will make that we will modify the requirements in the coach's handbook going into next school year. So honoring more teams instead of less. Any questions on that? I know that was a question in the community. The last item under the discussion and information, we have the 22-23 calendar. The board tentatively approved that last year. That is back on for final approval, essentially unchanged from the, the version that you saw last year. And then we are looking, we will be looking for tentative approval for the 23-24 calendar. Uh, change with that one has the start and end dates of the school year um, one week later. And another change would be no school on the Monday after Thanksgiving since the Christmas break would be a touch shorter based on where Christmas falls. So we're looking for public input on that for the next two meetings. We typically then approve the calendar in December. I like to get it out so families can plan for the next two years essentially. Questions on any of the calendar items? All right. Well, you're still, would you like to do Mr. Curtis's updates? Yes. Mr. Curtis was unable to, to be with us tonight. I've got a few things that I wanted to mention on his behalf. We have a number of students attending the Manufacturing Day at Northwest State Community College on November 19th. Uh, by showcasing engaging the people and exciting work, environments this industry has to offer. They hope to inspire next generation of manufacturers. Uh, manufacturing offers many exciting career options for our students, including engineering, human resources, finance and accounting, marketing, science, robotics, welding, and the skilled trades. So we have a group of students going there. Christ the Word Church will host Just Desserts on the evening of Friday, November 5th. This choir performance highlights the abundance of talent and accumulation of hard work from our students and staff within our vocal music program. Tickets will soon be available. And updated classroom furnishings have begun to arrive for the high school to make necessary updates to aging classroom furniture. Uh, we were able to update three full high school classrooms with new student tables and chairs and chairs out in the egg shop. So getting some new furniture in there. Mrs. Treheim. Red, is it on? Oh, okay. Alrighty. Okay, we had parent teacher conferences on October 6th and 7th. Those went very well. We had a, always have a great turnout. And our MVP uh, parent club, they provided dinner for the teachers on both of the nights, and it is very much appreciated. The teachers work very long hours those days, and so it's nice to have a break and have dinner 
on those nights. Um, MVP kicked off their Club's Choice Fundraiser Assembly on October 13th, and the fundraiser um, ends on, on October 27th and with a delivery date of December 2nd. We had backpacks distributed from Ohio Means Jobs to every student at the elementary as well as I believe the middle and high school. Um, these were free backpacks that every student received. It has the Evergreen logo on the back and I, I believe every student in Fulton County received a backpack. So um, I saw the kids wearing them. They're very proud of those and it, they're very useful. Our Monster Mass, MASH, sponsored by MVP, is going to be October 22nd. It's a free event for the kids to dress in costume and have fun dancing with a DJ and lots of refreshments and things. So it's a fun family event from 6 o'clock till 8 o'clock. Our October PBIS focus for Row Respect on Task We Are Safe is to just decrease the number of unwanted behaviors in the bathroom. Um, with the recent TikTok things going on, we're not sure if that has influenced our students to have some misbehavior in the bathroom, but we are reteaching and um, showing our students that we can be respectful, on task, and safe in the restrooms. If students meet their goal, then the last hour of the day on uh, October 22nd, they get to use toilet paper to mummify their teachers, and they will be treated to a popcorn treat at lunchtime. So we're collecting the data and we're gonna hope, be hopeful that the students meet their goal. The end of the quarter is October 22nd. We always uh, reward our students for re achieving all A's or A's and B's by uh, receiving a certificate and a pencil and then they also receive a treat that we usually go through the um, cafeteria to help us order those treats and distribute those. Uh, that is planned for the week of November 8th. And finally, our third graders will be taking the Ohio Air Assessment for English Language Arts. That's set for November 2nd and 3rd. And that's a very important test because our students in third grade need to show that they are proficient in order to be uh, promoted to fourth grade. So we'll be planning for that. They have another opportunity in the spring to pass that assessment, as well as some alternative assessments to make sure that they are promoted to fourth grade. Did you have any questions for me? No. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Roofer. Good evening. Yes, I'm still employed here. I know it's been a long time since I've been up here. Um, before I go to the report, I just want to thank uh, Dr. Swineford. She kept the ship afloat while I was out. She handled a lot of student issues, staff issues. So I know all the staff stepped up as well. So thank you to everyone uh, for helping out during that time. Um, the first item I want to highlight is the eighth grade band played with our high school during homecoming, which happens every year. Um, I talked to Mr. Lyons and Mr. Stearman, and they just wanted to say that our 8th graders, I mean, they played harder music than what's happened in the past, and just little things. They said they were very, very respectful. They followed directions. They didn't have to worry about it, and it just went very smooth. Um, they said it was one of the better groups that they've had go through as the 8th graders playing in homecoming, so shout out to them. Uh, on September 30th, uh, HC3 was at the middle school. We kicked off our BOSS program, which is our youth-led prevention program for sixth grade boys. Um, so that'll be beginning here next week. Um, the last thing is we started shout outs in the middle school. Um, kids and staff can uh, send in a Google form and just recognize a student or staff member. This month, the past couple months has been kindness. Um, I know it's brought, there's been some kids that just beamed with smiles when their name's over the announcement for doing something good. I've had staff members make comments about it, so it's nice to see good things happening in the middle school. Um, working on that best year ever and recognizing all the great things we're doing. And the last is just a housekeeping announcement. Grade cards will be sent home October 29th for the first nine weeks. So that is all for me, unless you have questions. I think so. No? Thank you. Good evening. I'm going to talk about the district report card that was released on Thursday. I want you to know I am not going to go through the 20-page document that was part of the board packet, so, but I do have some highlights there. So first of all, I think we really need to keep in mind that the state report card this year is very unique compared to previous years, 
And the reasons for that is because of the COVID pandemic, short-term changes in Ohio law and the waiver by the um, accountability requirements by the federal government. Something that we really need to keep in mind though, if you think about it, our current fifth graders, the last time that they had a normal school year was as second graders. So if you think about that gap of instruction, the changes that they have faced, the social emotional impact as well, have all had an impact on how they do in, in education in school. So there's a couple of um, data pieces that were used was in to identify those learning gaps and improvement planning. And that's something that we need to remember when we look at the data of our report card this year, is not looking at what we've done wrong, but what can we do better? And using those data points for that information. We should be asking ourselves questions. What have we done well? What can we improve on um, to increase the number of students scoring proficient? And why are certain groups of students missing school? Because if you remember, uh, chronic absenteeism is part of the district report card. They've collected data on this report card in achievement, progress, gap closing, improving at-risk K3 readers, graduation rate, prepared for success, attendance, and absenteeism. They did not give any overall grades for any component, but they have provided data that we can use to inform our instruction. And looking at our data compared to the data of other Fulton County schools, we are comparable. So yes, you're going to see our data went down and our as overall because of the impact, but also keep in mind, so did everyone else's. They also added a couple other components. It's called the opportunity to learn data. They talked about the educational delivery model, which we were five days in person. Hardware, which deals with access to technology at home. So our students do have technology at home, especially in grades four through 12. And then connectivity, the internet access, which we do currently provide internet access on MiFi hotspots for any student in the virtual academy. Here's something that we need to also keep in mind. Report cards, as we've known them in the past, we cannot compare as we move forward. House Bill 50, uh, 82 changed all that. That was um, approved or into law and comes into effect September 30th of this year. So it's going to be making us more challenging to comparing that data because what they're doing is switching to a star scale. So gone are the letter grades. It's now a star. It's going to be a one through five and then components will even have half stars as part of it. Then it comes down to the components. There has always, there's been 15 measures. It is now down to six. Gap closing, achievement, progress, graduation, early literacy. So they're changing names and changing what those components look like. And then the last one is called college, career, workforce, and military readiness. So those are all going to be phased in over the next couple of years. So to compare the, those overall components and the overall grades is not going to be possible. We really need to be looking and diving deeper into that data and how we can use it to inform um, our instruction and make improvements. So I wanted to share just kind of a general overview um, that we are comparable, but there are more changes coming. Any questions? Dr. Swineford. Mr. Samola. I uh, just had one thing I wanted to add, just an update on our, our COVID numbers continue to decline at Evergreen. We do a bi-weekly uh, Zoom with the health commissioner. They are on the decline in all of Fulton County. Today we only had 13 students quarantined out of the whole district and no new positives in the last five days. Uh, the state is in the process of evaluating the quarantine protocols for schools. They have a study going on in Warren County. Any potential changes would be announced in the next week or two with the goal of they're seeing minimal uh, spread within schools from student to student and the potential of shortening or eliminating quarantines with masks to keep kids in school. So we're waiting to hear the results back from the state and if they make any changes, which should be coming really soon. And if I'm right, there's low, there's very close districts that are already participating in the um, Henry County has already they did not wait for the state to make the change their schools and health commissioner in Henry County all agreed to and if I'm right that's where Fort County is so we correct. have some students doing this correct okay I heard Williams and Defiance County are also looking at it I think they're waiting for the state determination as well so okay. we're just 
We're not changing anything at this time, but changes may be on the horizon. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Small? Hey, Eric, can you follow up with the MVP installation of the signs? In the back sh shelter? Yeah, the shelter yeah, out okay. back. And then I had a couple questions, too. Uh, how many times have you met with as the administration about the drug testing? You've had at least two or three meetings, correct? Correct. And the then, administration had met multiple times, and then we had formed the subcommittee of the board, which met twice. So we've at least met probably five or six times. And it's been on the agenda probably for the last four months, correct? We've, discussed we've had it. discussion or something. I don't know. Yeah, and we, we've considered the privacy and allowing all that. Okay. Any other board members with questions or concerns? I want to point out um, in the student section on the football and the bleachers, there is, when you go to walk down the steps, I noticed on Friday, there is a board that is not right. Still have, I tried to catch Derek, but I wasn't Home able Home side to. student section yes. steps. So. Yes, right before the steps. It hasn't been. I almost. It's just a bunch of pop rivets that need to be redone. That's really all it is. I and don't. Yes, I must not usually go that way because I almost fell down the steps. Um, other than that. Um, all right. Then at this time, I just need a motion to adjourn the October 18th regular meeting of the Evergreen Local Board of Education. Let's move. Support. Roll call. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Vaculate? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Kiefer? Yes. Motion carries. At this time, any kids who have the green papers for Mr. Blanchong, you can bring them to Mr. Samola and he